So about a year ago, I got an Android phone, and probably like most of you in the audience, after playing with it for about five minutes, I decided I should write an app. So I thought of lots of good app ideas. Unfortunately, other people had already thought of them first. And eventually, I came across the next brilliant million-dollar idea, an app that can tell you what's the probability of seeing a rainbow right now. So before I could uh, build this app, I did a bit of research to learn about rainbows, when we can see them, and what we know about them. Um, ancient people thought, actually, that the rainbow was a bridge to the gods. Um, you've got to imagine, for ancient people, without fireworks and electric lights, seeing a rainbow must have been a pretty special experience. Um, in the Bible, we have the story of Noah's Ark, after it rained for 40 days. Then we had the rainbow at the end, which was God's sign that he won't destroy the world again. Personally, if I saw a rainbow after 40 days of rain, which means there's rain nearby, I perhaps wouldn't be quite so comforted. Um, in Australian Aboriginal culture, we have the notion of the rainbow serpent, which is often seen in rock paintings. And the rainbow serpent um, is often found in, in large water holes and has a, a strong role in the Dreamtime stories. So if you want to know when we can see a rainbow, we have to know a little bit about what a rainbow is. So in its simplest terms, a rainbow is just a distorted image of the sun. And this distortion takes place in a raindrop. So it took people a long time to work out exactly um, how rainbows are formed. Aristotle came up with one of the oldest explanations that stood strong for several thousand years. He thought it was something to do with the reflection. Unfortunately, his model, if you put it to any sort of simple experimental test, doesn't hold up. Um, the actual explanation is that when we have the sunlight come into a raindrop, it gets refracted by the air-water boundary and bounces off the back of the raindrop and the, the beams split up. And the angle that it comes out, if you do a little bit of simple physics, you can work out is around 42 degrees. So you can imagine when we have um, some raindrops in front of us where the rain is shining on them, we have all these raindrops that are bouncing off light at 42 degrees. And the reason we see an arc is that only those ones that are exactly 42 degrees away from us are the ones that we can see. The rest of them are producing rainbows for other people. So if we want to see a rainbow, we need to stand there so that we, <clears throat> we need to stand so we're exactly with 42 degrees under the light. So I promised at the beginning to explain how to see a rainbow. Charlie Chaplin once said, look up to the sky, you'll never find rainbows if you're looking down. Um, and here's a picture of my daughter, her name is Keshet. Um, if any of you know Hebrew, Keshet in Hebrew means rainbow. So, it's much easier to describe actually when you can't see a rainbow than when you can see a rainbow. If the sun is too high, more than 42 degrees, you'll never see a rainbow. Same thing if the sun is set. If it's a sunny day, if it's a cloudy day, or if the, the sky is covered with rain, clouds, or snow, you'll never see a rainbow. So, but to actually to do, to see a rainbow, we need the sun to be relatively low, less than 42 degrees. We need rain to be in front of us, and we need the sun to be directly behind us. So if you have the sun directly behind you, rain clouds in front of you, these are the perfect conditions for seeing a rainbow. So now that this is the, the basics of seeing a standard rainbow, I'll go into some of the more exotic forms of rainbow. The double rainbow, recently famous from a popular YouTube clip, apparently is quite a life-changing experience. And a double rainbow is simply caused when, the, rather than bouncing once in the raindrop, it bounces off twice in the raindrop. Tertiary rainbow is when the light, instead of bouncing twice, bounces three times off. And for a long time, these were actually thought not to exist in nature. And only this year, for the first time, was um, photographic evidence found of a tertiary rainbow. They're particularly hard to see because it bounces three times. You have to actually look in the direction of the sun rather than the other direction. This phenomena is a different one. It's called supernumerary rainbows. You can see these bands of light and dark light. And this is actually caused by the light interfering with itself. So apart from this, this rainbow is called a, um, a moonbow. It's also quite rare. And a moonbow is, is exactly the same thing, but caused by the moon rather than by the sun. And we generally see less colors. The reason they're so rare is we need the moon to be relatively bright and in the right position, and we need people to be awake to see it. So consider yourself lucky if you see one. So I thought I'd end with a few misconceptions about rainbows. One of my pet peeves is um, reading children's books with um, incorrect information about rainbows. Of course, you'd never be able to see You'd never be able to see a rainbow and the sun at the same time. For some reason, for some reason talking monkeys bother me much less. Um, what about the end of the rainbow? As you know, there's probably a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. However, the problem is, as rainbows are illusions, and they're always 42 degrees in front of us, if you walk towards the end of the rainbow, you'll never actually be able to reach it. What about how many colours are there in the rainbow? Aristotle thought there were three, Newton thought there were six, others, some songs say seven. The actual answer is an infinite number of colours. We actually have light split into all the colours from blue to red. The reason that we see bands of colour is simply a limitation of our visual system. So a particular frog would have you believe that there are actually many songs about rainbows, um, but unfortunately a little bit of simple research on uh, Amazon MP3 store finds that compared to other meteorological terms, there aren't actually that many songs about rainbows. So 
Just to conclude today, a reminder, if you want to see rainbows, you need to have the sun behind your back. The sun has to be not too high, below 42 degrees. You need to have the rain clouds in front of you. On that note, I wish you some inclement um, Sydney spring weather so you can maximise your chance of seeing rainbows. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.